Hey, welcome back to the channel here. Uh, while I'm getting started, if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button down below. I'll be uploading about two to three videos a week um, on subjects such as troubleshooting, general electrical advice, uh, and electrical information geared towards the average consumer. Um, and no, this isn't really a channel geared towards electricians. I try to make the topics of electrical thoughts and theory and put them on the bottom shelf for the average person to understand. And uh, one of those thoughts will be this video today. Also, while you're watching, I've got a question for you to answer down in the comments. Uh, how much experience do you have doing electrical work? Are you a DIYer or uh, are you in the electrical trade? And so uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I try to respond to all the comments that I can and appreciate that. Today I wanted to talk about an older video that I had made uh, titled How to Replace a Pushmatic Breaker and a comment that I got on that video uh, because I think that uh, there's a couple of points and a couple of thoughts that I have about it uh, that I think will be helpful for everybody. So the comment reads like this, great video. I have an old push panel in my home that is a pushmatic panel. Uh, I do not see a main breaker to shut off all the power to the panel. Can I do exactly what you did in this video without shutting off a main power supply? I am worried of injury causing a major problem. I have never done this and people I know say it's easy. I would like to do this myself but I am worried about safety and thinking I should just have an electrician come in. Two of my breakers keep tripping and my double stove push keeps tripping. I think it's supposed to be on my double stove pushmatic breaker keeps tripping. Uh, thanks in advance for any help. I have three thoughts about this comment of which I discussed um, with the, the guy that posted it initially and the first thing is that the pushmatic breaker of all the breaker designs is probably one of the worst designs uh, um, ever and that's why the, the panel is not made anymore um, the pushmatic breaker you can get aftermarket breakers <clears throat> they are not new obviously um, and uh, they um, is still a bad design and I don't know if you can I haven't actually seen one in a long time but if, if you find one it's probably an old refurbished breaker um, but the design itself is terrible uh, almost as bad as the Zinsco now the Zinsco panels themselves are a bad design but the breakers as far as the breaker design the pushmatic takes the cake um, partially because uh, about half of the pushmatic breakers that I've replaced in the past don't fit. Uh, so you take an old pushmatic breaker out, you go to put the new or the replacement pushmatic breaker in its place and it, something doesn't line up. There's like two tabs on the back of the breaker. Uh, there's a screw uh, that goes through the base of it and it, it's almost like a bolt-on breaker uh, where it screws to the bussing inside the panel. and uh, those holes don't line up and it's just it's chaos and you know so um, I've seen where I've had to take out half of the breakers in the panel to allow a little bit of room for one breaker and then you can reinstall the other breakers it's a nightmare it's a really bad design and and, and that's for an electrician so for a do-it-yourself or homeowner um, it's that much more challenging and so you know I I know a lot of big box retailers many times will sell old aftermarket breakers for older panels uh, and this one is probably one of the most challenging and uh, so you know with newer style breakers the one inch mold they're the basically the square type of breaker they're one inch wide which most brands use nowadays they're a lot easier to replace for the average homeowner um, but this design is just a really bad design. So, um, because it's a bad design, let me go back a second here. When I read comments on my YouTube channel and Instagram, there are grave misconceptions about what Massive Electric is. With Massive Electric, I do not... It is not my goal to tell non-electricians that they can do any electrical work. 
and it's not for me to explain things that make it easy for the non-electrician to do electrical work. Um, I'm just trying to explain things topic by topic so that the individual can make a better decision, whether it's fixing something on their own or not fixing something on their own. So I am not trying to tell people that they can across the board do all electrical work because that is not true and that's not what I'm trying to do on this channel. I'm trying to give people information and understanding so that they can make better decisions. So when it comes to electrical work, they can understand what they're doing or they can know where to draw the line and call the electrician or the electrical contractor in to do the work. So and this is one of those cases uh, with a pushmatic breaker pushmatic panels um, which is borderline and part of the reason is because in the comment that I received um, where the gentleman is concerned about injury or causing a problem and rightly so um, whereas replacing a standard break a newer breaker you know these type of safety issues do exist uh, but they can still be done much much easier um, than this pushmatic style panel and so because the breaker is old bad design it's likely that the any replacement breaker would not fit in the panel well could cause problems even for an electrician uh, and on top of that for there to be concern by the homeowner about getting injured uh, or causing a problem in the panel then i would say that that is where you have to draw the line and um, call the electrician or your contractor to do the work for you um, because I don't want anyone to get hurt you don't want to get hurt um, and this is one of those cases where it's it does it does cross the line now um, with any video that I do there's always an element of safety and especially as it applies to do it yourself or the reality is sometimes you cannot do it yourself and because of safety or lack of understanding or lack of experience um, and so even though replacing breakers is simple uh, sometimes you just have to have some self-awareness and understand that um, you can't do everything for safety reasons um, and the third point that I have to make is I almost missed it actually in his comment uh, when I first read it and responded. Um, the last line he says, two of my breakers keep tripping and my double stove push keeps tripping. Now, I've said this in other videos uh, and other posts as well. Um, when you are troubleshooting, make sure that you troubleshoot the problem and not the symptom. That is, you want to fix the problem and not the symptom. So in this case, uh, this guy wanted to replace um, some breakers in his panel, which could have been the problem. Um, but if the breakers keep tripping, it's especially on a pushmatic because those breaker panels are probably 40 years old without looking, they're 40, 50 years old. Um, the breaker could be bad, but if you have two or more breakers that you need to replace because they are tripping, and if the breaker is resetting and is still usable, but then somewhere down the line trips again, um, that tells me that it's not the breaker that needs to get replaced. And this is true whether it's an old breaker or a new breaker. Um, just because a breaker trips doesn't mean that it needs to be replaced. The, a tripping breaker means that it's it, it's actually telling you something. It's giving you information. Uh, it's telling you that there's a short or that the circuit is overloaded. And in a panel that's 40 or 50 years old, it's far more likely that the circuit or panel is at maximum capacity and is either overloaded or is is going to be overloaded very soon. And so if you have a breaker that continues to trip all the time, um, like I say, especially in an older house, it, this panel, I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen a picture of it, but it probably has 
eight or ten breakers in the panel for a house. And nowadays when we build homes, they probably have 20 to 30 circuits in them. And that is 20 to 30 circuit breakers um, or more. So all that load that would normally be in a newer house, all the equipment and stuff we have plugged in and appliances and all this stuff, is it's not spread out across multiple circuits or multiple breakers. It's all combined uh, because it's an older design, older wiring um, on less circuits, which uh, easily overloads a circuit breaker. So that's probably the most important lesson learned here is that when we are troubleshooting to fix a problem, make sure we're looking to resolve the problem and not the symptom. The symptom here is the breaker is tripping, but the breaker, that means it's telling us something, that more than likely the circuit or panel are overloaded. And in this case, if that's the case, then you're looking at replacing the panel, um, which is a lot more work, obviously, than just uh, replacing a simple breaker. Also, there's costs involved with that, but uh, Sometimes that's just the reality, you know, when you have an older home with fewer circuits and we as consumers use a lot more electricity now than we did 40, 50 years ago. Um, that's just the reality of older homes. So anyway, I hope that helped uh, clear up some things and, you know, some things that I've talked about in the past. Uh, but I just wanted to bring up those three points uh, because this comment was actually very good and helpful. For both the the guy that wrote the comment and just for myself to clarify some things for you so hopefully that was helpful and hopefully you enjoyed the video if you like the video click the thumbs up button if you did not like the video click thumbs down and uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks for watching